the thing I wanted to talk about was Boris Johnson. So he's uh, mm. he's he's the only man on earth who's finally figured this out. Uh, BLM might be a Marxist organization, don't you know? Yeah, the adventures of the man who's just started paying attention. Yeah, yeah. literally, it's uh, it's kind of embarrassing. But <laughs> I, I I I saw this, and that was my view on it. And after reading it, I'm not so jaded. But it's it's yeah, it's kind of cringe that everyone's walking around on eggshells still. Yes, yeah. like how much more evidence do you need? I mean, they literally came out and said it. I mean, yeah. I mean, when your opponent is saying, I'm a Marxist, and you're like, hmm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, st- I'm starting to be suspicious. <laughs> like, yeah, it's pathetic. So this is say it, Boris. This is the Independent reporting on it. Boris Johnson orders probe into far-left hijacking of Black Lives Matter and Extinction Rebellion. <laughs> it's not a hijacking if they're, already ma- they're the ones who made it. <laughs> it's like Karl Marx saying the Marxists have hijacked his philosophy. Yeah. Which he did. He did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, did he met a bunch of Marxists and then was like, well, if you guys are Marxist, I'm not one. Yeah, he's like, I'm not a Marxist, yeah. But, the, but that's the thing. Is, like, I, I'm starting to suspect that a bunch of French people have hijacked the French Revolution. It's like, yes, yes, they have, Boris. Yeah, yeah buddy. So uh, I went to the, the government uh, website talking about this, which is the next one, and which they're announcing this. So Lord Walney announced as an independent advisor on political violence and disruption. And this is where I'm sort of less uh, inclined to be like, you screwed up. Because it is that they wanted to put someone in charge of investigating... Let's just call it. Let's just call it what it is, which is far left extremism. Yeah, yeah. You know? So then they decided they would dress it up like this. And this guy used to be a Labour MP, and then he's become a Lord. Um, mm-hmm. He's uh, quite an interesting guy. He uh, very very anti Corbyn. So good good Based, boy on yeah, that. Yeah, good. So then he's uh, been put in this place. So I'll just take some some quotes out of here. So the coronavirus pandemic has coincided with an increase in activity and prominence among far right, far left, and other political groups. Lord Walney will examine the points at which the activities of such groups can cross into criminality and disruption into people's lives. His findings will be recommend and recommendations will be presented to Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the Home Secretary for subject to publication upon their approval. So he is going to investigate basically what they say the far left and far right. He will be focusing on the far left um, in all seriousness because of everything he said about it subsequently hmm. and saying that, yeah, this is where they keep being criminals. You should now lock them up, which is good. I- yeah, I'm I'm upset that it took this long. Yeah, but but that is a good thing. So good job, government. You have done a nice thing there. But the the Telegraph reporting on this got a bunch of quotes from him. So I assume they interviewed him mm-hmm. for this. And this is where it starts to fall down a little bit. Yeah. Where it's just like, I oh, come on, like he like this guy really is the guy who just found out what's going on. So they say. So the thing to keep in mind, mm-hmm. Lord Woolney resigned from the Labour Party in 2018, saying that the Labour Party had been taken over by the hard left, yep. good, and said that Jeremy Corbyn was a clear risk to national security, based. Yeah, but we say, <laughs> we say based. But, but it's, it's also basic bitch. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the, the first entry level into looking into Jeremy Corbyn's philosophy is, oh, wow, this guy really hates Britain. I was like, oh, well, he's, he's literally telling you I'm a Marxist. Yeah. Like, Okay, I and would he keeps def- signing with the IRA. I would never okay. launch a nuclear weapon. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for telling everyone, Jeremy. It's, Jesus. Uh, I don't know, man. So he said he warns that the UK must he- heed the growth of the far right in the, U- in the US. So the f- growth of the far right in the US affecting the UK, which culminated in the storming of the Capitol last month. So that was the, <sighs> the narrative when this was put out, Yeah, which of course it was. On the other end of the political spectrum, however, he stressed, we must be vigilant against a similar blind spot in Britain to the prospect of a progressive extremism that is unacceptable disruption or even violence carried out in the name of progressive causes, to which the political establishment and a large majority of the population have great sympathy, like climate change and racial justice. Uh, That last part's a lie. Just take any polling on... Uh, Extinction Rebellion or BLM. <laughs> no, people don't like it. Like it's just it's just nonsense. Like those groups are, are not popular no. um from what I see. And of course he is referencing the BLM and Extinction Rebellion as the two far left groups that need to be investigated for violence and extremism because I mean they, they literally carry it out every time they do anything. Hmm. So he stressed that there is not an equivalence between the threat of the far left and the far right in Britain pointing out that the latter has significantly bigger problem and both have been dwarfed by the scale of Islamist terrorism. It's like, yeah, both of them are dwarfed by Islamism. I mean, that's that, true. Yeah. That is true. But the saying that there's no equivalent between the far left and far right in Britain, um, in terms of terrorism, 
like actual you know plots mm-hmm. you can point to maybe but in terms of extremist ideology obviously and in terms of an international perspective mm. yes actually the far right look kind of pathetic compared to the far left i yeah. mean if you get your hands on any terrorism index for any given year of the last at least like you know five years yeah it's, it's jihadis then communists then everyone yeah, else jihadis 90 yeah. percent communists make up another like five to nine percent and then like others because far yeah. right you know ethno nationalists are sure they're kind of a thing in the west but globally they're kind of pathetic hmm. like they're they're not um in in the same league for no. terrorism but the the i i think um i i i honestly think that if the far left didn't have so much representation in public life as in if they weren't on good morning britain if they weren't in all the all the universities we'd see a lot more terrorism from them yeah because i mean they're quite happy not to commit terrorism because they get everything they want anyway yeah why would they so. need to frankly yeah, so he continues. There have been a number of, at the moment, isolated examples of climate change activist groups, particularly Extinction Rebellion, overstepping the mark into antisocial behaviour. <laughs> overstepping the mark. I mean, could you could you imagine him talking about the EDL like that? Well, oh, these lads are going a bit, uh, bit far, aren't they? They're doing something a bit overstepping the mark. Do you remember when the public had to drag a, an Extinction Rebellion protester off the top of a train? So they could get on the train and leave. Yes. Yeah. It was pathetic. Yeah. But I don't think he's referring to that. I think he's referring to their no, 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 I know. anti-democratic activities, which yeah. would include, if you can get the BBC article, Extinction Rebellion blocking newspaper circulation they don't mm-hmm. like. I mean, the kind of thing the brown shirts or the, or the reds would do. Yeah. You know? Well, they are the reds. So well, yeah. Literal watermelons. <laughs> anyway, so that that's... Yeah, I mean, if that's not overstepping the mark, I don't know what is. Hmm. So he continues, I want to look at the way anti-democratic, anti-capitalist, far-left fringe groups in Britain, like the Socialist Workers' Party, tend to have much more success in hijacking important causes and mainstream cultural activity than the far-right and the harm the far-right may do. So he's he's openly calling out here that actually the kind of the problem here is that Trotskyists, Socialist Workers' mm-hmm. Party, or other far-left, anti-capitalist, anti-democracy groups, they're very good at influencing uh, institutions by just infiltrating them. Yeah, they just become part of the cogs, and then they're the machine. Eventually, which is what over. we've been saying for many years now. Mm. I mean, I pick any government department, or, or you know, the national press, for example, like yeah. the BBC, you know, state-funded. It's full of leftists. I, and uh, and then he points out that the far right are terrible at that, and uh, they suck. And it's like, yeah, okay, good, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. A far greater number of mainstream politicians are happily embracing far left front organizations like Unite Against Fascism. Now that's good. That's a good call out there. So Unite Against Fascism, for foreign audiences who may not know, is a literally Trotskyist organization that was set up to be like, we're going to fight the BNP. And embarrassingly, they ended up getting endorsed by David Cameron, the conservative (coughs) prime minister. It's just like, you knew what they were and you still did this, you moron. Mm. And they have subsidiaries. So the main subsidiary they have is Stand Up Against Racism. Stand Up to Racism. Stand Up to Racism, sorry. This is chaired by Diane Abbott. The chairman is Diane Abbott. The, the Diane Abbott who said Mao did more good than harm. Yep. The Trotskyists say that they are central to its running, as we've done previously. This mm-hmm. episode I'm referencing here is the BBC using a representative from Stand Up to Racism to demand that a right-leaning, not far-right, just right-leaning YouTube channel needs to be banned. Which, which it was. Which they've now done. Sta- yeah. uh, Voice of Wales, for people who might remember, is now gone off YouTube. It's, yeah. it's dead. Thanks, national broadcaster funded by the state, who is getting the Trotskyists in to demand that this A happens. Trotskyist child. Yeah. Other people on there uh, include people from the Muslim Council of Britain. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Anyway. And so they say that his intervention, Lord Woolney, comes after the Socialist Workers' Party faced allegations of trying to hijack the Black Lives Matter movement last summer. Lord Woolney also raised concerns that the leadership of Black Lives Matter UK have pushed a very hard line and absolutist view. I was like, Jesus Christ, you really are the... It's like basic... You think yeah. the left are infiltrating Black Lives Matter? How could he say this? This is quite an absurd accusation. Well, I mean, we just go to their website. It's not even hard. Like the next one here is uh, Ben Bradley pointing out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good MP good him, here. Yeah. Um, that this is from their website. We're guided by a commitment to dismantle imperialism, capitalism, white supremacy, patriarchy, and it goes on and on. State structures that disproportionately harm black people in Britain and around the world. But International it, communists. Got it. It just sounds That's like all a you Soviet have to say. I mean, put on a Soviet accent and say that. We are committed to guiding and dismantling <laughs> imperialism, capitalism, white supremacy. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pathetically obvious yeah. that that's what they are. The, these, these are communist revolutionaries. And then you just, just the images from, from the protests. So if we can get the first image up. This is a BLM protest, and you see those, stein- those signs there, the mm-hmm. yellow and pink. Yep. You'll see at the top, stand up to racism. Yep. This is, you know, for people who may be wondering, 
keep those signs in your mind, the colour scheme, whenever you see a British protest. Any left-wing protest, those are always there because it's literally like buy your own uh, cabal of angry leftists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just come up and they, they give them the signs. Yeah, they're, they're cool. A funded organisation produces these signs. Yeah, and this is the organisation he's saying is run by Trotskyists and therefore needs to be investigated by the British state. Yeah. Um, and they're at a BLM protest, so okay. And yeah. then you notice this lady at the bottom there with her body armour and uh, her little hat there. Yeah. Let's go to the next image for a close-up. Oh, I remember her, yeah. I mean, does this look like a communist or does it look like some kind of... You know, centrist liberal. It, it very much looks like some sort of South African economic freedom fighters uh, attire. Hmm. You know, the sort of radical, r radical left wing who are like, "Yeah, we're going to kill the boa, kill, kill the white man, and stuff like that." The communists. But, yeah, they're, they're, with the, the 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 whole aesthetic is the same aesthetic. I mean, berets. I mean, where else yeah. are they popular? Yeah, you know? exactly. Anyway, so he he finishes off by saying that the the niche agenda of BLM being anti capitalist risks taking attention away from really legitimate and urgent debates on reform about what is needed about racism in the wider society. How are you this stupid? I don't understand. Like, how can you be like, they have real concerns, but also they're run by Marxists who make everything up. I mean, what more needs to be done? Like, honestly, what more needs to be... We've got... Racism is illegal at this point. Like, you, if you're racist to someone you are obviously going to find yourself with some sort of criminal record. And Piers Morgan, for just approaching the topic of, well, Meghan Markle was wrong on her allegations of racism, is now no longer a host of Good Morning Britain. Gotta but go. What, what more? What more needs to be done? I mean, it's not even like the United States has hate crimes on the books, which I mm -hmm. also oppose. I think it's stupid. Of course, yeah. You say if someone commits assault, but they did it on the basis of racial prejudice, therefore they should get a longer sentence. <clears throat> you know, that was an argument back in, what, like the 90s, 2000s? Yeah. Uh, we have hate hate speech laws on the books. I mean, there mm. are codes about what you can and cannot say yeah. on the basis that it may offend people. Yes. I mean, Section 127 of the Communications Act, anything said on the internet which can be perceived as grossly offensive, which of course anything racist is that, mm. therefore that can be a crime, it's sentenced with up to a year in jail, or fines. I mean, it, it, what, that isn't enough to, to counter racism? I mean, literally policing people's speech? I also just hate the concept. It's like... It's horrible. It, but the, it goes against sort of like the, the the spirit of the common law, right? It's it's your actions that matter. It's your actions, the things you do that matter. That was the that was the spirit of the common law, not you know, what you believe. Yeah. You know, we don't criminalize people for their beliefs, or we shouldn't. I know anyway. this is this is massively anti-liberal. Yeah. But if we wanted to yeah, take yeah. the perspective of we're totalitarians who want to police well, yeah. racism into you know non-existence and police your thoughts. I mean, we're already policing speech. I mean, do you want to go the thoughts route? I well, guess, what what stops us? What stops us? What 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 barrier is there? Yeah, and just talking about BLM in case he's he's still too dense to understand that why they're a problem. I mean, why can I make images like this? We go to the next uh, link here. It's just you know an image of one of their demonstrations where they ended up hurting this police officer. Like, why can I make that? This is in response to a Labour MP saying that Black Lives Matter is wonderful because they're they're an inspiring call for justice and equality. Yeah, I don't think so. Bull. Zara Sultan is one of the worst as well. Yeah, she is one of these far left idiots. She's an, she's an Islamo leftist. Yeah, that's a good description. Yeah. Um, but the response to the government saying we're going to investigate the far left is, of course, this is fascism. <laughs> um, I'm not joking. <laughs> oh, Paul Mason. Yeah. yeah, Paul of, Mason. Of, of course, Paul Mason says this. Paul Mason is a goddamn communist. So, like, Boris Johnson's probe into left-wing extremism, in quotes... Shut up, Paul. ...is a distraction... Sorry, is a dangerous distraction <laughs> from the fascist threat. Thanks, Paul. Of course. Thanks for so, the input from the communist radical left. Thank you. I look forward to your next appearance on Novara Media, Paul. <laughs> I watch them all, by the way. I watch so, them all to see what the communists think, and you're crazy. So, I, I actually just read, like, his, uh, his history as well, just to be interested in why he's of note because I don't, I don't know him I know him as a Labour activist yeah. but he's like a Corbynite simp of course but he worked for the BBC and Channel 4 like mm -hmm. he was an editor with Channel 4 and his qualifications for doing this is he has a degree in music and politics yeah. and he used to be a music teacher but also the qualification God. really is that he is a communist being a communist is the qualification hmm and the argument in here is, is, of course, laughable. A Greek acquaintance, long departed, joined the anti-Nazi resistance as a teenager and then fought on the communist side of the civil war. The civil war between the communists and Democrats. Like, the Allies were backing the Democrats. <laughs> when it was over, as a gesture of reconciliation, his local police commander offered to destroy his intelligence file. I told him to keep it, he said. That's my medal. It's the only official recognition I'll ever likely get. So we're, we're going to start off by simping for a communist who was not just fighting the Nazis, but then decided to fight the democratic revolution. Right. Um, 
that's a good guy, I'm sure. Yep. And then he says, on the same basis, I demand to be investigated by Lord Walney, the government's special envoy for countering, countering extremism. So I am an extremist. Yeah. Um, well, there you go, mate. There's there's one. You can, yeah. you can take him out. I mean, literally simping for communism, been simping for communism all his life, and is then demanding that you look into him. Well, let's make his wish come true. Yeah. I mean... I don't know what else to say. Yeah. I'm not going to read the rest of it. They're literally it's just admitting propaganda. that they're communist extremists. I mean, what everywhere. more do you want? And you're like, yeah, but the far right. It's like, <laughs> what far right? It's like, yeah, well, they do exist. I mean, combat 18, 19, or is it combat 18 or 19? I don't know. Whatever. I've never they're, heard you know, they're a thing, but they're already prescribed. Where? Well, they're already prescribed <laughs> groups. People have been arrested for being members of it. I mean, that's being dealt with. Yeah. But what's happening with the far left? So, oh, they get mainstream media coverage. Yeah, I just wanted to bring they up... They control it. A, ...a list we have on our website, which is an incomplete list of anti far violence, which, which mm. is... Uh, I, I try and update what I can, but not, not often enough. And just referencing some of the things that have happened in the UK, uh, anti far claimed for one parliamentary hustings that they shut down. They mm -hmm. just came there and shouted until it was shut down because they didn't like the speakers. Mm -hmm. They come to your MEP campaign yeah. They've to assaulted, assault you. Yeah. MEP candidates, uh, Tommy Robinson as well. Storming university talks, not just yourself, but Jacob Rees-Mogg, yep. because the speaker they didn't like. Um, none my, of the people my, involved my, here My talk at um, University College London, was it? Yeah. It's where I got the anti -far flag. But also Jacob Rees-Mogg, a conservative MP, giving a talk. They stormed that to shut mm -hmm. it down. Yep. Um, and in 2009, apparently we understood the problem. Because we arrested thirty of them for assaulting people, Excellent. and then and then twelve were charged with conspiracy to commit violent disorder and given prison sentences or conditions. Good. It's like, well, we'll do this. Do yeah. this again. There's keep th doing it. There's your uh, roadmap, mate. All of the ones that write articles saying I'm a communist extremist and I want violence, arrest them. Hmm. And also, just if we're going to do that for the, like, this is the outside of the government, right? You've got the mainstream media associating with them, stand up hmm. to racism organizations, you know, street violence from communists. Well, you also need to look inside the state because the state is also of blame here. So this is a, a, a the next thing here is a is a what should I call it? A report, garbage report. Like it's I don't even want to give it the the, the, the time of day, but it's, it's something we've done a podcast on, which I'll upload when we've edited it. Yeah. But it's arguing that hateful extremism, as they define it, needs to be made illegal, mm -hmm. even if it's not a crime, even if the things that are being said aren't illegal. Yeah. yeah. And the sources they use in this are Hope Not Hate. Like, Hope Not Hate are advising the state on what laws to draft to make more speech illegal in the UK. Hope Not Hate, a communist organization. Yeah, the next link here. I mean, something we've referenced a million times. The head of research for Hope... No, nope, shouldn't be that one. There we go. Nope. Nope. Nope, that's not it. Anyway, but there's a political light link um, where I hope not hate head of research is an open communist. He is a member of the Communist Party of Great Britain, mm -hmm. and this is his page on Hope Not Hate's website, confirming that yes, he is still the head of research. It's like, well, well, what do you want? Like, if if your if your government is being advised by members of the Communist Party of Great Britain on extremism, there you go. These are the people you got to look for, mate. I hope this has been helpful. <laughs> if you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.